Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you will agree we're doing exceptionally well, given the um, time available. We will now move on to our um, distinguished panel. We've got, we had seven panelists, we now had six, because one of the panelists has moved up to co-chair. So I will move swiftly on to introduce uh, Federico Barlozzetti. Federico Barlozzetti is currently responsible for shipping finance activities for the Structured Finance Division of Banca IME SPA, the Investment and Corporate Banking Division of the Intesa San Paolo Group. Mr. Barlozzetti, um, would you like to share with us some of your views? Um, they can be new views or anything relating to which you've heard this morning. Okay, hello to everyone. You've got two minutes. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll be quick then. No, I was just going back to what uh, Fabrizio said before about Italian banks and foreign banks and the different approaches that we, uh, we, we actually we, we, we were following. Um, looking at the past, basically, my, my impression uh, was that uh, Italian banks were operating more on a sort of relationship basis, like Fabrizio said, while foreign banks, they operated more on a pure asset-based, uh, with, with a pure asset-based based approach. Well, shipping is an asset-based mm, business, basically, so it's difficult to say, you know, who's wrong or, or, or who's right. Um, in the end, what we tried to do, as, as uh, Intesa San Paolo before and Banca Imi now, which is 100% owned by Intesa San Paolo, so it's the same group, uh, we tried to be a little bit in the middle. Uh, in the past, the bank, when the bank was operating uh, uh, without a pure uh, and dedicated shipping finance, desk, they were following, say, 100% the relationship approach, uh, whilst recently then they, they tried, we tried to move uh, basically in the middle between relationship and asset-based. Um, my view is in the end probably this is the best approach because yes, shipping is an asset-based business, but you have to look also at, you know, the whole consideration of, uh, of the ship owners you're looking at to finance, uh, is track records. Uh, is all fleet, uh, doesn't matter whether it's buy well, it matters, but you know, it's, it's a different wh whether it's buying at top prices today, if maybe, you know, he, he managed to average uh, the, the, um, the price of his old fleet with, you know, good acquisition in the past or the other way around. Um, so this is basically it. I mean, my view is that probably the best approach is looking right in the middle between pure relationship and asset based. And, um, and that's what we're trying to do and what we did in the past. Thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, I would like to move on to Gianmarco Boccia. Gianmarco Boccia had been working in Sace since 2005. Uh, is head of corporate in the new market division. Mr. Boccia, two minutes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a question and uh, a comment. Uh, but first of all, let me remind that Sace is the Italian Expo Credit Agency and we are an insurance company, and so we, in, in no case, we directly finance a specific transaction. What we do is to work in partnership with uh, the banking system, and we ensure the financing against the non-payment risk of the borrower. Um, my comment is on what you, Gabriele, said before uh, about the exit of foreign banks uh, from the Italian market. Uh, we actually experienced uh, an opposite trend in the uh, last two or three years. Uh, and this is probably linked to our public nature, since we need to try to offset uh, the shortage uh, of uh, available financing in the market. So we actually increased our exposure to the sector, and we now have more than 5 billion of euro of asset insured that accounts for 17% of our portfolio. Um, and the question is, in order to be able in the future to continue to strongly support the system, uh, we have started talks with uh, a foreign export credit agency, the one located in those countries where most is concentrated new, the new orders. So I'm referring to China, Korea, and the companies we are talking to are China Exim or Cake or Sinusur. And the question is, uh, ask any one of you uh, any direct experience in arranging financing with uh, uh, those export credit agencies that, in our opinion, can be uh, 
a viable and successful alternative uh, financing channel. He's taken up his whole two minutes for the question and answer, so a very brief answer. Who's going to take that? Uh, I talk uh, for MPS Group. We have, uh, as I told before, we have no relationship with foreign customers, and so our uh, actual and trend on trend view is that we have no actual experience in, of this case of, of, of loans. So every new every new initiative is well is well appreciated and so i don't want to say that we don't want to discuss anything new such this but actually i have to tell you that we have no experience in this field thank you um i'd like to move on to arturo capasso who is senior faculty member and professor of business valuation the master's course in economics um, and finance at the Federico Due University of Naples. Over Thank to you. you. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a question and a, a consideration, but I start from the consideration. First of all, um, I agree with uh, Fabrizio and the idea that after the crisis and uh, the boom and the crisis, we experienced a, a change. But according to my opinion, we are seeing the change of the business model of the typical ship owner. So we, are, um, we have the model the past, of the past with high leverage and uh, strict family control and sometimes also uh, specialized in, in a segment of the market. I think that uh, we are going to experience more uh, equity in the, in the finance and something we can understand this also because the, the previous model was based on a high uh, cautional value of the ship. Now the, the value of the ship is much more volatile, so it's, it's very difficult to base everything on debt. As we experience also a very uh, mm, uh, a drop in syndicated loans in this kind of. So I think that we, we should see two, two forms of uh, equity. Probably, uh, I say formal private equity and uh, uh, IPO uh, stock listings. Uh, I say formal private equity because private equity has always been a characteristic of the shipping business, but it was more or less an informal private equity uh, towards uh, family and friends. Now, uh, I think in the, in the next few years, we experience more uh, formal private equity and uh, probably more uh, stock listing. So, my, uh, from this consideration, um, uh, I, I, um, I have a question. Uh, how does this different financial structure in shipping company will change the commercial policy of the uh, ship owners? A quick answer. Is there any link? <laughs> Arturo, as you know, you are so both involved in the private equity, you're for a generalist fund, so and myself for a private equity fund specialized in shipping, so then my reply is very short, very brief. So I think that the uh, shipping companies are to improve uh, their uh, uh, culture in terms of corporate governance and looking for the private equity, to demanding for private equity and IPO when the market is good, looking for the expansion not when the market is gloomy. Not as a pure replacement of capital debt. As you can confirm, Paolo, this is one of the a case, a positive case of a public listing in an MTA in uh, Italian stock exchange. So uh, he, uh, so he joined the company on the public market, not for specific needs, but looking for a strategy of the company. 